A man accused of driving a semi into a bus full of children is in court this afternoon. Neighbors share their concerns after a high-speed police chase passes through three communities in our area, a driver going more than 90 miles an hour. And area semi-drivers are talking to News 3 about a stretch of the interstate in Rock County where a number of crashes have taken place. This is News 3 at 6. An Indiana man is facing a $35,000 bail for charges related to last week's school bus crash outside Lodi. Well, News 3's Leah Linscheid has the very latest. She joined us in studio. Leah? 42-year-old Wayne Murphy is facing felony charges for that crash along I-39, injuring 26 people on that bus. You'll remember a number of people called 911, reporting his semi was all over the road driving erratically before the crash. Today, Murphy was in court via video conference. Prosecutors say blood tests show he had both opioids and benzoids in his system while driving the multi-ton truck. This defendant took upon himself to be operating this what became a lethal type weapon while he was under the influence of two very strong uh, mind-altering drugs. The judge gave Murphy a $35,000 bail. He's also not allowed to drive, drink, or have any drugs in his possession that he doesn't have a prescription for. The Indiana native also not allowed to leave Wisconsin if he posts bail. The story will continue to keep a close eye on Leah Lynch out in studio. Leah, thank you. A medical examiner trying to figure out how a man and woman died on Madison's east side. Police say there are no signs of foul play. Both the man and woman in their 50s. They were found last night, again, on Madison's east side at a home on Harding Street. Three people are in custody tonight after leading police on a chase through multiple towns, and this caused quite the commotion in the neighborhood surrounding the chase. Amy Reed joins us now to tell us what those people saw. Police are telling us the chases kind of started in North Dakota. They saw a car reported missing out of North Dakota in Fitchburg, tried to stop it, but the chase went on. They were able to catch up to them near Stoughton Road. That's where we found Judy and Ron. The normal sounds off Shado Lane. A lot of uh, nature, a lot of foxes, sandhill cranes. Are peaceful. It's one of the things that people here cherish. I love it here. I've been here 20 years and I dearly love it here. But Friday morning. All kinds of state police were coming with their lights all on. Neighbors Judy and Ron saw the police using their road, Shado Lane, to try and track down people on the run. The chase started in Fitchburg, reaching speeds of 90 on the Beltline and 50 in neighborhoods, eventually coming to a halt on Stoughton Road when the runaway car crashed. Two of the people tried to run away, but a canine caught up, biting one of them. The driver of the car was wanted out of North Dakota for violating probation on charges of choking a correctional officer and escaping custody. He have to watch for his mosquitoes. Judy and Ron didn't know what was going on even after it wrapped up. I was talking with someone else out here and he stopped and said that everything's okay now. But their spirits about the neighborhood stay up. Something like what? <laughs> that happens here a lot. No, this is a pretty quiet neighborhood. Both Judy and Ron said they were grateful for the police presence. They said it made them feel safe even amongst the uncertainty. Now, some local schools went on lockdown while the chase was going on, meaning the doors were locked. No one was allowed outside, but classes went on as normal. All right, Amy Reed reporting. Amy, thank you. Attorney General Brad Schimmel is awarding the first school safety grant under a law Governor Walker signed back in March. The grant is going to the Kenosha Unified School District. It totals more than $888,000. The district will use that money to train staff in youth mental health, building security assessments, building upgrades, and also social media threat training. The new law creates $100 million in grants for school safety upgrades. Governor Walker signed that in the wake of the mass shooting in Parkland, Florida that happened back in February. Schools have until Monday to submit applications. Schimmel wants to award most of those grants by mid this month so schools can complete those upgrades by fall. The Wisconsin Department of Corrections has reached a legal settlement that calls for the agency to end the use of pepper spray and solitary confinement at the state's troubled youth prison. The deal was filed in court today. It would resolve a lawsuit the American Civil Liberties Union and other groups filed last year. The settlement also calls for limiting the use of mechanical restraints and strip searches. 
Lincoln Hills is located outside Irma. City inspectors are evaluating the safety and structure of a building in Milwaukee after a truck ran into it this morning. Part of the building's facade collapsed and sent hundreds of bricks onto the sidewalk. There you see it. The building houses a subway restaurant and a Liberty tax office, a bike station. Also damage in that collapse, as you can see here. City leaders say, fortunately, no one was hurt. State officials have quarantined a Dane County Deer Farm and a Richland County Elk Farm after animals on both of those properties tested positive for chronic wasting disease. The State Department of Ag Trade and Consumer Protection says that the National Veterinary, Veterinary Laboratory confirmed Thursday that a 15-year-old white-tailed doe and a two year old elk cow tested positive. The agency did not say where those farms were specifically located or how the animals may have contracted the disease. A new grocery store could be coming to Wanakee. Village Administrator Todd Schmidt says there is a possibility of bringing a high V to the village. Schmidt says the store would be near the intersection of Woodland and Q. Forward Development Group is working to purchase land for the store. The 57,000 square foot high V grocery store and gas station is proposed for part of the development. Schmidt says it will probably be a couple of years before doors open. A plan commission will meet next week to talk about this project. Shoppers will have a new way to get to the new Oak Creek IKEA store starting on Sunday. The Milwaukee County Transit System adding a new stop to its purple line. The IKEA Way stop will be the first stop on the line's north run and the last stop on the south line. This is IKEA's first Wisconsin store. It just opened back on May 16th. Edgewood High School alumni and officials are breaking ground on a $9.2 million performing arts center today. Many gathered on Edgewood's campus for the groundbreaking ceremony celebrating both the beginning of construction and the spirit of fine arts at Edgewood. The center will serve both students and community members by providing new performance spaces. I think this is a wonderful day for, uh, for Edgewood uh, and also for the Madison community because uh, we do have a strong performing arts uh, reputation. Alumni and students from years past said goodbye to the school's old auditorium before it gets demolished. The new Performing Arts Center will feature rehearsal, band, choral, and common spaces in addition to a new auditorium. Construction of the Performing Arts Center is slated to be complete in 10 to 12 months. Well, the Medical College of Wisconsin has given an honorary Doctorate of Humanities degree to Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers. He was honored for his commitment to end childhood cancer and blood disorders. Rodgers works with MCW faculty and others in the community and is heavily involved in the Midwest Athletes Against Childhood Cancer Fund, the MAC Fund. He has helped raise almost $3 million for research impacting thousands of lives. After a string of construction zone crashes involving semis, area truck drivers are reaching out to News 3. Their are concerns with this stretch of road, what they say are causing the issues. That's next on News 3 at 6.
Welcome back. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation is trying to figure out how many crashes have happened this week on I-3990. There's been at least five in the construction zone that we know of since Tuesday. Our Rose Schmidt is in the news center to tell us the department's advice for you. Rose? Eric and Charlotte, as you hit the road this summer, of course, be safe. And keep in mind that Fridays and Sundays have the most traffic as people are traveling in and out of Wisconsin. The crashes on I-3990 just keep piling up. There's 40 miles of work zone between Beloit and Madison. And those 40 miles see 50 to 60,000 cars and trucks daily. Suddenly there's a lot of, of moving parts. Moving or not moving. Friday morning, two semis and six cars collided, leading to two crashes at mile marker 147 near Stoughton, causing some headaches for the state's Department of Transportation. There's sudden brake lights for whatever reason, and people following too closely, having the rear end collisions. Earlier in the week, at least two other crashes happened less than three miles away. That is a very straight section of work zone that's going on, that all the traffic shifted onto the southbound side. And in Rock County, a crash Thursday led to a fire. A truck driver from Horicon has a theory on why that particular stretch is causing pileups. They shifted the traffic lanes and they moved the original median wall. And once they did that, the groove that was underneath the median, the old median wall, is now in the left lane. A groove that Bill Bertelson says throws off semi truck drivers because their tires are so much larger. I drive that way. Quite a bit. Also causing some confusion, just how fast should you be driving on I-90? The speed limit is 70 miles an hour throughout the work zone. There are some advisory speeds in various crossovers when you're shifting from one side to the other that are 55 miles an hour. But many people who drive on that highway say those cars are just going too fast. They need to lower the speed limit down there too. There's no reason to do 70 miles an hour in that construction zone. DOT's advice? Slow down plan ahead and simply pay attention to what's right in front of you. DOT says there's also a lot of tailgating between semis and cars, so make sure you're giving them the space they need. Rose Schmidt reporting tonight. Rose, thank you. So ahead on News 3 at 6, the program designed to keep kids and teens off the streets and entertained on Friday nights. And it's a tradition every June. What you need to know before Sunday's Ride the Drive bike event when News 3 at 6 returns. I'm meteorologist Gary Canolti live at McKee Farms Park in Fitchburg. It's Festa Italia, where everybody's Italian this weekend. I'll have more on the event and what weather we can expect for the upcoming weekend in just a few minutes. Party.
The program at the YMCA aims to keep kids out of trouble during the summer. This is the fourth year for Friday nights at the Y. The program gives teens a safe space and offers activities like basketball and swimming. The program also helps kids form positive relationships with officers and firefighters. It is free and kids don't need to be a Y member to participate. The program runs from 8 to 11 Friday nights at the East and West Side locations. The program will start June 15th at the Y in Sun Prairie as well. A decades old community festival starts today in Verona. Hometown Day runs through Sunday for the last 46 years now. The festival has offered music, food, and fun family activities while also serving as a fundraiser for area nonprofits. An annual event that encourages families to ride their bikes takes place in downtown Madison Sunday. Ride the Drive will shut down John Nolan Drive from Olin Park down to the Monona Terrace from 930 to 4 on Sunday. Traffic on North Shore Drive at Brittingham Park will also be closed. This is the 10th year for the event that draws thousands of bicyclists to John Nolan and three Three of the parks along Lake Monona. Last year's event almost didn't happen. Trek Bicycles pulled its sponsorship last year. That company had covered half of the $30,000 it takes to put on the event for years, and the city wasn't sure if it would have the money to keep it going. So to cut costs, the route was scaled back by about a mile. While the road closures start earlier in the day, the biking itself starts at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Great weekend for starting all kinds of the festivals mm -hmm. that are going on out there. And Gary is live at Festa Italia in Fitchburg, ready to uh, celebrate the area's Italian heritage. Gary? I'm ready to sell, uh, uh, sample the uh, spaghetti and meatballs, too, as soon as we're done here. So, uh, yeah, this is the place to be. This uh, It's a beautiful evening out here at McKee Farms Park. We'll talk a little bit more about Festa Italia in just a couple of minutes. But first, let's take a look at the forecast for this upcoming weekend for Festa Italia. This evening, beautiful weather. Temperatures are in the 70s now. They'll cool down into the 60s later on. Tomorrow will be partly sunny in the morning, but we could see a shower or thunderstorm chance late afternoon into tomorrow evening with high temperatures in the lower 70s. Sunday, we're back to perfect weather with partly sunny skies and high temperatures in the lower 70s. So a beautiful weekend to be out here. Visible cloud track shows how a lake breeze front has pushed almost all the way to the Mississippi River, cooling us off. I mean, temperatures have come back a little bit with the sunshine, but you can see how a bank of clouds came in and then just kind of fizzled out as they pushed to the south and east. But temperatures are much cooler near Lake Michigan than they are farther inland. Fortunately, those clouds didn't bring any precipitation. There are some showers and thunderstorms up in North Dakota. That's what we'll see late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night. Otherwise, the live view from the Edgewater Sky Camp in downtown Madison, it's a picture perfect evening on the northern end of the UW campus. Almanac for today, high temperature 77 degrees. That's still three degrees above normal, but about 15 degrees cooler than it was a couple of days ago. 64 the overnight low, and right now we're at 77. Partly sunny skies, winds pleasant out of the northeast at 10 miles per hour. Dew point temperature has dropped in the lower 60s and will continue to drop into the weekend. Temperatures are only in the low to mid 40s up near Lake Superior while approaching 90 over parts of northeastern Iowa. So a huge temperature contrast. That lake cooled water and the northeasterly winds really have cooled temperatures down close to the Great Lakes. Out to the west, some showers and thunderstorms in the Dakotas. As they move eastward toward Wisconsin, they're going to lose a lot of their punch because the air will be a little drier here and the temperatures will be a little cooler. It's not as hot as it is where those storms are occurring out to the west, where temperatures right now are in the middle 80s to the middle 90s, like in Omaha, Nebraska, whereas to in, in our part of the Midwest, temperatures are mainly in the 70s and even cooler to the north and east. Notice the dew point temperatures, low 60s here, but they drop into the mid 30s to our north and east. With those northeasterly winds, the air will continue to dry out a little bit for tonight. So as we go ahead and check out our forecast for tonight, we'll look for skies to be partly cloudy. It should be a beautiful evening. Our low temperature will drop off to about 50 as the rain stays out to the west of us. For tomorrow, look for partly sunny skies in the morning, then turning cloudy in the afternoon. There'll be a chance of showers and thunderstorms late in the day with a high of 72. On future track, look for partly cloudy skies tonight. Temperatures uh, pretty comfortable, dropping to around 50 by tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, look for high temperatures in the lower 70s, but shower and thunderstorm chances will arrive late in the afternoon. Tomorrow night, those showers and storms mainly in the evening hours. Then after that, will turn partly cloudy by morning. Low temperatures dropping to the upper 50s. And then Sunday, we're back to partly sunny skies and high temperatures in the lower 70s. As we take a look at the rainfall projection, about a quarter to a half inch of rain. There could be some heavier amounts if a shower or thunderstorm gets in your area. Otherwise, look at the uh, seven day forecast. Temperatures upper 70s with dry weather Monday and Tuesday. Slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm Wednesday and Thursday. And then temperatures get even warmer as we go beyond next weekend and into the first part of the following week. 
Well, I'm out here at Festa Italia. It runs uh, from uh, to 11 o'clock tonight here at McKee Farms Park in, in Madison or in Fitchburg, but also tomorrow runs from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. and then on Sunday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, there's the information. It's right on Highway PD just to the west of Fish Hatchery Road. But I've got some friends behind me that have been already uh, checking out the spaghetti for me, so I'll, I'll be all set, but there's a lot going on here. <coughs> we have uh, Katie Letourneau, who will turn 101 tomorrow, uh, in, the, in a couple of days, and she'll be out here dancing. There's dancing, there's plenty of music, you can hear that going on behind me. Lots of good food, $3 admission charge to get in, uh, but there's games for the kids, there'll be bocce tournaments, so if you're Italian, even if you're not Italian, you turned Italian this weekend, you got my permission, come on out to McKee Farms Park for Festa Italia. Well, it's a tight race for the top spot across all divisions at the WIA State Track uh, and Field Championships. We'll show you where our teams stand on the first day of competition. That's next in sports. Hi, I'm Leah Linscheid. Coming up tonight on your News at 9, some muscle pain and soreness are common after a tough workout, but it could land you in the hospital. We'll explain tonight on Fox 47 News. <laughs> Well, it is a big weekend for some of the fastest and most agile athletes in the state of Wisconsin. Hundreds competing in the state track and field championships in lacrosse. In the Division I 3200 meter, 
This is a long one, but Peyton Sippy from Janesville Craig taking the lead here, and then she would extend it by quite a bit as she crosses the finish line. She almost lapped another runner as she did, winning with a time of 10.42.01. Katie Rose Blackwich of Sun Prairie finishing in fourth place. A big event for the Lancers, the triple jump. La Follette's Kiara Lee taking the top spot, and Tyra Turner finishing third. Jennifer McGinnis from Middleton finishes fourth. So here's where we stand after five of the 18 events on the girls' side. In Division One, DC Everest in first, La Follette and Muskego tied for second with 16 points. In Division Two, with three of the 18 events complete, we've got a three-way tie for first. Somerset, Edgerton, and Edgewood all with 10 points on the girls' side. And in Division Three, Royal in first, Hilbert Stockbridge and Newman Catholic tied for second, while the boys' standings coming up at 10. Some moves for the Brewers on this summer Friday. Zach Davies headed to the 10-day disabled list with, list with inflammation in his right rotator cuff. So we welcome back Jiman Choi to the Brewers roster. Jet Bandy also down to AAA. The Brew crew at U.S. Cellular Field tonight to face the struggling White Sox. They've lost their last four games. Brewers, on the other hand, have won their last five of six. Chase Anderson getting the start against Hector Santiago, first pitch at 7-10. The Badgers men's basketball team announcing its opponent for this year's ACC Big Ten Challenge. North Carolina State will come to the Kohl Center on November 27th. The Wolfpack coming off a season where they lost to Seton Hall in the opening round of the NCAA tournament. The Badgers are 2-0 all-time against North Carolina State. Also, I've been marking down the days on my calendar, 90 days and counting until college football season kicks off here in Wisconsin. The Badgers will host Western Kentucky on Friday, August 31st. Kickoff time announced today. It'll be on primetime on ESPN at 8 at Camp Randall. The following week against New Mexico will kick off at 11 a.m. and week three against BYU at 2.30. Second round of the Memorial Tournament in Ohio. Tiger Woods looking at vintage Tiger Woods here. Third shot on the par 5 11th. Hits that approach shot from 95 yards out for the Eagle. That would move him to five under par, but he actually didn't think he could play much more after that. Play was suspended due to weather. They're still finishing up right now, but those people in the crowd, they're winning as well. Speaking of not winning, because the NBA isn't getting enough attention these days, J.R. Smith riding himself into the history books last night by not knowing what planet he was on when he had the ball with seconds left in the game and it was tied and come on tape don't lie he mouthed the words I thought we were ahead to a very exasperated LeBron James after the buzzer I've seen that look from my mother many many times <laughs> but then to reporters in the locker room he said he knew the game was tied he thought they were going to call a timeout and if you have been anywhere near Twitter or the internet in the last oh I don't know 12 hours or so that uh, exasperated LeBron look has been everywhere. Rough stretch for JR yeah. Smith. We've got like 20 seconds left. Should we just run the clock out here? Or? Oh yeah, totally. We're just going to dribble it out, you know. Oh. <laughs> Losing effort. By the way, LeBron <laughs> is good. 51 points for LeBron and he lost. See you at 10. Download the new Channel 3000 app and get alerted on your mobile device the minute news breaks. Wherever you go, be the first to know with Channel 3000.